All right, today's rehab session is specifically about hamstring rehab progressions using bands. So if you're working on hamstring training rehab, whether it be for ACLs, whether it be for actual hamstring tears or tendinopathies, or simply weak hamstrings, and you're working on the banded open chain work. So not the closed chain stuff like deadlifts and Nordics and elevated bridges and all great hamstring work. This is when you're specifically going for open chain work and working on hamstrings with bands. And sometimes you need to do this when the gym's not open or you're not near a gym and you have to use band work. So specifically for that, we're gonna go through some progressions from isometric through to eccentric through to concentric, which is a really good way if you're doing it from injury to sport okay so first one i'd go for is the isometric version now what i would use is not too heavy a band because when you're doing this if the band's too heavy you're going to put too much load through the hamstring so be careful if you're in an isometric phase keep the load light you're just trying to generate a little bit of muscle tension and activation work while you're going through that acute healing phase so this is not for advanced stuff this is simply for beginner but this is where you start when you're injured. So what I would use is get your simple sort of TheraBand with two loops like this. Get a light one, like a yellow one. And I would go around one, two loops on one. Okay, now the other one, you put as much loops around this as you need to tighten it up. So if you had it like that, it's gonna be very, very loose. You go for one, it's gonna be tighter. Obviously, if you go for two, it's gonna be even tighter because you shorten the band. And obviously you notice there's a double band here. Okay, now that should be reasonably quite a lot of tension for what we're gonna do now. So with the isometrics, and we're doing this in open chain prone position because we're gonna go on knee flexion and we're gonna use one leg as the like the loader, if you like. So if I go into this position here and bring both my legs up into here, so I'm gonna do my isometric work to start with in sort of 90 degrees roughly of flexion of the knee. Now, if I'm gonna train my right hamstring what I need to do is from that position, there's not much load going on in there at all. I can hold it there, that's fine. When I extend my left leg, so I keep my right leg still, I extend my left leg out, that's gonna start putting load through my hamstring because I have to fight that on my right hand side. Now the more I push down, the more load there is. So this is very nice if you wanna graduate the load or it depends on how strong you are, how bad the injury is. You can work on static work just like that. So I can just put a bit of load on, hold it with my right, and we're aiming for at least 10 seconds. But you're really going for 30, even up to a minute, but no longer than a minute. And then you simply just back it off, drop it down, and there's your rest period. So if I wanted to increase that load, what you want to aim for is just extending the leg further and further and further out until you feel like that leg is about to let go or there's a pain about to happen. So you just don't go into pain, just work on where your limit is, See if you can get to the point where you can straighten out and then you can feel that work here. Now that's obviously around about a 90 degree load there. What I can also work on is some outer range. So I can go down to here and hold in this position and then extend it out. Obviously there's less load there, but it's more vulnerable out there. So when my hamstring is lengthened or an extended position like that with the knee, then I'm weaker at that point because the muscle is longer. So I can start training isometric at different lengths and different ranges depending on what my hamstring injury is like and what my recovery part is like. So that's a really nice one to start with. Remember, it's a 10 second, 30 second, maybe up to a minute of those holds, but I only do three or four of them in a set, all right? So that's your isometric one. That's the one we want to start with. Then we need to go to a eccentric version of doing a hamstring curl, which is like doing a hamstring curl on the bench in the gym, like on that bench machine. But if you don't have the bench or you're at home, or you're away and you specifically want to work on drills like this using bands then what I'd go for is a probably a little bit heavier than that because you're going to do working on loading down and remember you're going to be a bit strong at this point because you pass that isometrics phase so you could probably go to a red depending on how strong you are you'll have to attach it though to something lower down now initially what I would start with is lying flat sort of level with the band we'll go to up on a bench later but I would start with flat on the band and the reason of that is when that leg is fully extended the load is really light okay when you're up in here the load is more and you'll notice when you're doing this one when that leg is extended so if I do this on my say right leg what I'm going to do is put that around the back of my heel now make sure you wear shoes with this because you need the back of the shoe to hold the band that's why it sort of stays on there um, with this one 
you'll notice that I have to come well forward because when my leg's straight, I still want some tension there. So don't make the mistake of starting here and having it all loose like that because there's nothing in that lower part. We want some tension in that outer range of the hamstring. So I want to come forward a little bit to about there, all right? But you'll notice there's not much going on there. So with this type of exercise, when you're flat, you're going to be working on your inner range strength the most. But hey, that's where you're strongest. So the outer range is where you're weakest. So it's kinder to start with. But what I would do for the first part is eccentric work, all right? So that means if I'm using my right leg, I want to give it a rest on the way up on the concentric phase. So I assist it. It's still working, but I assist it upwards. Then I work on my isometric hold. And then I slowly, eccentrically lower that down. Obviously, it gets really easy at that point there. So I go again, pulling up, high as I can go, take it away, slowly lowering it down. And trying to stop the, sort of the jitters, if you like. You don't want to come up here and then sort of bang, 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 coming down. Okay, always really smooth. Try and focus a little bit on, okay, don't arch your back. Keep that sort of core on. Keep a little bit of glute engagement here. So you're flatter through here, so you're targeting more hamstring and less slower back. Okay, so two up, take it away, hold it, lower it down. And obviously, if you're more tension, more load, just go further away. So up in here, there's going to be more load at the bottom when you come down here. But you'll still notice it backs off right at the bottom because you're level through there. Okay, so. From that stage, you might spend a bit of time on that. Then you go up onto something like a bench. Now, again, if you're at home, you're away, you could do this on a hotel bed. So up or your own bed at home, your own sofa at home, where you elevate it up. Then you're gonna get a downward drag of that band. So there will be more tension at the bottom. It's still limited a little bit. What you can do is have it hooked all the way under, but I will reserve that for concentric work, which we'll go in a minute. So. Grab the band again, on it goes, into this position here, and then you go up onto your bench top, and so now I've got tension straight away, okay? It's still limited at this point, but hey, you're recovering from a hamstring tear, or you're trying to get a hamstring surgery right, you need to make sure you don't put too much load on it in the first place. Anyway, so from this point, again, up you go, hang on to the bed you're on, keep, try and keep your back in neutral at that point, let it go, and then lower it down, all right? So obviously, phase three of that is concentric work, okay? So where you're just going up and down either with two or up and down with one. I usually go for one for rehab. Two, you can worry about when you go to the gym and do some heavy weights, that sort of thing, because you're going to do hypertrophy training. But for rehab purposes, you probably want to work on one because if you work on two all the time, unless you've got two separate bands, you'll find that the good leg always helps the bad leg out and you don't get that evenness going on. So from this point here, you're just working on really focusing on your core control here, pulling it up, going as high as you possibly go now, okay? So right up to that inner range, big squeeze with no cramping, and slowly all the way down right to the bottom. Now like I said, at this point here, there's not much tension. If you want more tension down the bottom there, what you'll need to work on is getting it tighter right down under the bottom. Okay, so going to concentric, which is sort of the third phase of this hamstring training, what I would do to make the tension a little more even and a little bit more at the bottom, you'll have to go to two bands. So I've chosen a red and a green here. So two long bands. If you shorten a one band up like this, it'll be too much load at the top. Okay, so you've got to get heaps of load on the inner. If you want that, that's fine, but you won't get much load at the bottom. So if you want to go from sort of that eccentric phase where you're working on the inner range first, where it's stronger, being kind on the outer range, and then you go to concentric when you're stronger down the track, but keep it even all the way through, just like a bench in the gym, then what I would do is two long ones. Now, you're doing that because you need the extension, but you need double the strength because obviously it's a longer band. So to get the same amount of tension, but kind of and easy on the way through, use two long bands, you'll also have to go longer. Now this gets tricky when you've got, say, just a bed at home. But if you've got a bench like this, you go further down like this, right underneath, and then come through. So there's your anchor point. And then, if I'm going on my right leg, on the right side, underneath that pad there, okay? So now I've got tension at the start, that's quite a lot. 
but I've got enough length to when it expands, it's kind of on the way through. It's not going to cramp the heck out of me at the hamstring at the top. So if we put that same drill back of the heel in the top there, come up onto the bench in this point here, and now I can feel that tension straight away. I can focus on here and then just pull that right up. You can see I can go all the way to the top now, all right? So there's an even amount of tension all the way through from the bottom, a tiny little bit less there, but it's pretty even all the way through. So I've got a constant load on that. Now the good thing about this is, if I've got a constant load, my hamstring can handle it, all right? And it's even all the way through from outer range to inner range. So I'm getting strengthening right through range, so that's you know, pretty much the same. All you've got to do, if you find that too easy, simply add more bands, add the thickness of the bands, or go to a tougher band to get that tension. See how you go with that hamstring training. See you next time.